Hello, welcome again to our course of overview on TCM classics and doctrines. Today we're going to spend some time with Gong Xue Xue Pai. Gong Xue Xue Pai or Gong Xue Doctrine、um, has very interesting meaning to it. In a translation, the Gong means to attack, to eliminate, to invade. Uh, Xie means、uh, evil, pathogens or toxins. So you could say Gong Xie Xue Pai is the school of pathogen attacking method, or sometimes we just call it detoxification doctrine. The central thing is basically very simple and straightforward. If we can put our focus and energy by eliminating. The pathogens first and foremost, the body will restore itself. The focus, therefore, should always be on attacking the pathogen and not, not deviate from that and trying to restore body's functions. So, if we look at the Western definition of detoxification, is the process of detoxifying or the state. Or condition of being detoxified.、Uh, in physiology, the metabolic process by which the toxic qualities of a poison or toxins are reduced by the body, and、uh, frequently this is, can be a medically supervised treatment program. For example, for alcohol or drug addiction, designed to purge the body of intoxicating. Or addictive substances, and this such program is often used as a first step in overcoming physiological and psychological addiction. Now, this is not the detoxification, shall we say, doctrine, idea, or concept.、Uh, the idea of the concept of detoxification in this Chinese medicine school of thought is to really get rid of any pathogens. That become toxic, that become harmful to the body, and so the truth of detoxification have really three points. One is that you have the pathogen that comes in. These are the things. These are the initiators that cause second pathological consequences. They get into the body, and it creates a pathological progression, and that pathological progression give us disease. Okay, so. The toxin, the situation of definition of toxin in Chinese medicine, is the pathogen and the pathological consequences, the symptoms it create, the harm that it creates before it becomes a disease, are the toxins. So pathogen and its progress,、uh, progressive consequences in the body creates this disease phenomenon. So this is toxic to our body, and we need to get rid of it. So the focus of this school. Is to get rid of the toxins that causes disease in our body. So, and there are two situations. You know, there are situations that's obvious. There's an obvious disease progression, like somebody got sick, have a cold, have a flu, okay,、um, ingest some poison or toxin, cause stomach vomiting or nausea.、Um, these are obvious disease progression. Therefore, we want to eliminate whatever pathogen that has created. This、uh, pathological situation, we do cleanse、uh, and get rid of the byproducts of these pathological, pathogenic invasions. That's the first part. Then there's the second part, is basically adhering to the Huang Di Nei Jin's whole concept: superior physician treat what is not diseased. There are toxins in our body that builds up and accumulates that we may not know. That we may not have symptoms, but it eventually can create disease. So this is a situation where there's no disease progression. This is where we're doing detoxification without having long symptoms. Okay, maybe there's some long symptoms, but not so severe. Maybe they're milder. Now in this situation, actually, funny thing is that this detoxification enables and facilitate the restoration of body's function. And besides that, it also our goal is also to strengthen 
the body's function. And so, in summary, uh, overview, the Gongxie Doctrine uh, is really initiated by this doctor, uh, Zhang Chongzhen, or sometimes we name him Zhang Zihe, which we'll talk a little bit about him more. And again, the central theme, the doctrine, is attack heat toxins with cool and cold herbs and methodologies. His famous publication is Lu Men Si Qin, Lu Men Si Qin. And he's uh, the supporting physician of this doctrine is no other than his students, Chang De. And the supporting publication is written by Chang De. It's called Sang Han Xin Jin, Sang Han Xin Jin. So let's take a look at this founding environment. Very similar to He Jian doctrine that we talked about previously before. It's during the Jin Yuan Mongolian dynasty time, wartime. And the Song dynasty is failing, it's failing. And there's a lot of wartime, there's plague, there's famine. And uh, um, it began in this, this doctrine became in the same province with very similar climate and patient conditions. There are frequent epidemics and febrile diseases. And again, also began at the same time period as He Jian doctrine. And it's an antidote, it serves as an antidote to the government sanctioned publication called Taiping Huiming Ju Huang. At that time, the Song Dynasty government came out with a Bible of basically uh, PDRs, uh, physicians' death reference in some ways of Chinese medicine, where this is basically a list of patternized herbs for people to get them and, and use them for their conditions. The problem with this is that most of our kind of warming, most are tonifying, and so this uh, doctrine is cooling and and cleansing so it serves as the antidote. And at that time, the trend of the day at that time is favors tonification, dislike purging and sedation, favors warming, cooling is not so good, cold is not so good. Things like Da Huang, Mang Xiao are snakes and scorpions. They are no good for you. They're toxic for you. Dry ginger and aconite are sweet as malt sugar. So that's kind of like the, the whole concept of the consumer mentality at that time. So the trend is to go for these warm tonification herbs. And even with the push by He Jian uh, doctrine of the fire heat pathology by Dr. Liu Wan Su focusing on that to cleanse uh, to cool, it is still difficult to change things overnight and change things around. So, um, Zhang Zihe said that, that, you know, inferior physicians knows only to tonify deficiency because no one is going to fault you when you're trying to quote and quote strengthen the body. And uh, inferior physicians are afraid of treating excess condition when it really requires you to purge. And people call this the safe way. Well, the safe way doesn't necessarily mean you get the job done. In fact, frequently you can actually cause a disease condition to get worse. So the origination of this detoxification doctrine really come from Neijin and Sanghanrun. And it has a strong agreement with this phrase, Xie zi suo cuo qi qu bi xu in Neijin. It basically means, if you have congealment of pathogens for a while, it will eventually weaken the qi. And regardless how strong that person's qi is. And the weakness of this qi will invite congealment of pathogens. So that means is that if you're vulnerable, if your wei qi is weakened, and that creates a hole in your immunity, it actually becomes attractive to pathogens to attack you. You become a good, easy target. So, he has a very clear understanding for Neijin's on this, uh, Neijin, uh, Zhang Zihe, and he had a strong alignment, this doctrine has a strong alignment with Zhang Jinyue's use of sweating method, Hanhua, 
uh, emesis uh, method Tu Hua and purge method Xia Hua uh, in Sang Han Rim. So he exclusively used these three methodology in three pathogens, toxins, and as a detoxification method. And the additional influence is that he's actually one of the favorite disciples of Zhang Wansu, the father of He Jian doctrine. So therefore, he really learned a lot about the five he pathology and adopted and created his own ways of using cooling and cold herbs by further using cold and bitter herbs to attack these pathogens. Now, the original concept is that the formation of disease, I don't care if it's endogenous origin, what we call Nei San, or exogenous uh, origin, what we call the Wai Shi, doesn't matter. They're all due to pathogens. doesn't matter if they come from the outside or the inside. These pathogens are not normal in the body, and they need to be get rid of. Once the pathogens are gone, your source qi returns and will recover on its own. So therefore, the use of sweating method, vomiting method, and purging downward method are the most frequent method of Zhang Zihe. Zhang Zihe. Now, there are several human castes in this situation. Zhang Zihe or Zhang Chongzhen is the initiator. He students uh, Ma Jiu Chou, uh, Chang De, uh, Li Zifang, uh, the supporting physicians. For example, uh, Ma Jiu Chao is Dr. Zhang Zihe, one of the, his favorite students. And he might be the one that written most of uh, his publication, Room and Sichin, because Dr. Zhang Chongzhen is a very busy clinician. Chang De has written the uh, Zhang Zihe Xin Jing. Um, and being respectful to his teacher, he puts the teacher's name on the book, and it basically uh, names as Dr. Zhang Zihe a mirror of the heart. That means his essential understanding of medicine. Now, the detoxification, detoxification doctrine has great influences for the future. At that time, it established the foundation for later Wen Bin Xue Pai, the warmth disease doctrine. It also established foundation for the initial treatment of plague, how to treat plagues. It established foundation for later treatment of cancers, tumors, and miscellaneous endogenous diseases. It also created this whole concept of xie qu xue fu zhen. Get rid of pathogen is to therefore support the anti-pathogenic qi. So the influence is quite great. And let's move forward to look at the work of Zhang Chongzhen or Zhang Zihe. Zhang Chongzhen, um, his other name is Zhang Zihe. He's born in this Jin Song dynasty time. Um, 1156 A.D., and uh, he passed away at uh, 1228 A.D., and he written this wonderful book called Lumen Sichin. It's a compilation of 10 plus different publications of Zhang Chongzhen that got put together, and there are 15 chapters in this book. And there, there are four distinct features and contribution and, and school of thought from Dr. Zhang Chongzhen. One is that all diseases, regardless endogenous or exogenous, all came from pathogens. Number two, attacking pathogens, it is basic. It is the fundamental. It is the way to get rid of diseases. Number three, development of the three methods of detoxification, the diaphoresis method, emesis method, and purgation method. And number four, he also actually very much invented this whole bloodletting therapy. And this is no different than the medieval time in Europe where they're doing a lot of bloodletting therapy. But the difference is that what he did is a bloodletting therapy, he uses it actually with a lot of different acupuncture points. And uh, he used it to help to relieve some of the symptoms not just for fever, but reduce, for example, things like sore throat condition. So it's much more advanced, the European bloodletting, 
just in the sense is that the European way of bloodletting is just getting rid of evil energy. But in Chinese medicine, it's actually a little different. You're starting to treat symptoms besides febrile diseases. So number one, <clears throat> his first contributions are all diseases from pathogens. Well, he basically says exogenous pathogen causes exogenous diseases. Endogenous pathogen creates endogenous diseases. And the pathogen can have different kinds. There are basically three levels of pathogen. There is what we call the heavenly pathogen. And this relates with climate. This relates with wind, heat, summer heat, damp, dryness, cold. This heaven style of pathogen attacks the upper part of our body. Then there's the human level of pathogens. And these are basically have to do with food have to do with the food that we intake. So it have a lot to do with taste and the quality of food. Salty foods, pungent foods, sour, bitter, uh, sweet, and bland foods can all, if it's excessive, they can all attack uh, our body. So that's the human level of pathogen. It tends to attack the middle portion of our body, basically our elementary tract. The third type of pathogen is what we call the earth level of qi, the earth level of pathogens. And this comes from fog, dew, rain, um, basically hail, uh, ice, mud, more what we call heavier type of uh, uh, pathogen that can attack the lower part of our body. So a lot of that damp situation. So here I have identified these three levels of pathogen that attacks our body. And he says that qi and blood must be flowing and not stagnant. Anytime when there's any stagnancy, this will invite pathogenic invasion. It's almost like you open your front door, say, so come on in and have a party in my, in my house. That's basically what happens. So qi and blood must be flowing so therefore, you will see a lot of treatment he has is to get rid of these blockages of qi and blood caused by pathogens. By eliminating the pathogens, the qi and blood flows. And when qi and blood flows, disease disappears. So number two, his second distinct feature of this school of thought is to attack pathogens to get rid of disease. Again, he says all diseases are from pathogens. All treatment begin with attacking these pathogens. The attack must be swift and quick. There is no slow, gradual build-up. It's a quick attack. Sooner the pathogens are gone, sooner the source qi, yuan qi, returns. And he emphasizes on attack with medicine, such as herbs, acupuncture treatment, bloodletting therapy, but when you need to restore body's function, when the attack is gone, when you're just trying to nourish the body, you nourish with food. That's what he suggests with nutrition, with food, instead of medicine. So, very famous phrase, when nourishes life, use food. When treat disease, use medicine. And that's his famous uh, quotation for us to contemplate. And he talked about Han Xie two methods, the diaphoresis, emesis, and uh, purgation methods. We should use herbs. But when we tonify our body, we should use food, such as grains, meats, fruits, and vegetables. And he further say, one who know how to use medicine knows how to that patient take in five grains to tonify. And these five grains are your rice, uh, proso millet, and foxtail millet, wheat, and soybean. This is at least the major staple of the Chinese culture at that time. So he believed if you're going to nourish somebody, use grains. Grains should be fundamental. Grains will help to get the body's function back restore the body function. Now, if one uses minerals and herbs to tonify, 
the pathogen will be tonified, and this will cause death. He definitely doesn't like tonification, especially when the pathogen is still in the body. And that's the reason why he always, always proposed attack first, tonify later. Another way to put it is the best defense is offense. So he said further that all herbs contain certain imbalances. Why are they herbs? Why are they so therapeutic? Why do they become medicine? It's because actually they are out of balance. They are not like simple vegetables. You can hold day long, you can eat whole day long and you feel fine. These herbs, some are bitter, some are strong. So it's not like this is something you can ingest for a large amount of it and not having some consequences. All right, so all herbs contain a certain amount of imbalances. Those, that's why they have therapeutic, curative, and even sometimes toxic properties simultaneously. So prolonged use of tonics, as he says, is not good. If you always use tonification herbs, this will cause accumulation of small imbalances into larger imbalances, such as if you use Gan Cao a lot, or you abuse Ren Sen a lot, eventually it becomes too much for the body. So he definitely do not like tonification in the long run. So number three, his distinct feature of contribution is detoxification methods of diaphoresis, emesis, and purgation. These are the three main method treatment that he prescribes for his patient. By using these three methods of treatment, uh, he is able to treat all diseases. For him, these three methods encompass all the other methods of treatment. You don't need to go to the other method, just these three would be more than sufficient. So let's talk about diaphoresis. He believed in using uh, you know, diaphoresis, you can make a sweat and you can do many different things to make the body sweat. You can use pungent warm, pungent warm herb, you can use cold and cooling herb, you can moxa, you can steam, you can wash, you can bathe, you can iron, you can brand, you can do acupuncture, you can do stone needling, you can do dialing, you can do massage, can all cause sweating. Any method that can relieve biao would be considered to be a diaphoresis method. So for all the condition where the pathogen attacks only the biao, the exterior and tissue, diaphoresis, the sweating method, would be the number one and the most important method. So if you look at the American Indians, you realize that is actually their major treatment methodology. It's a sweating method. Because all the time when you do sweating method, you can get rid of majority of diseases. That's why they, they have sweet lo uh, sweating lodges. And that is a major treatment for American Indians, for example. All right. So he further said that in diaphoresis method that when cold pathogen, when it attacks, it stagnates in the tissue. It hides out in our channel and collaterals, creating pain and numbness, and even swelling in extremities, itchiness, stiffness, and spasm. Therefore, we must use sweating method, Han Hua, to bring it out. So he further said that when cold, damp summer heat enters the tissue, but yet to enter deeper, so it's on the superficial, to speedily get rid of pathogen would be to sweat it out. So this understanding is still correct today. It's still something that we adhere and follow. Now, Han Hua, Hmm, had to be very careful with all the condition because if there's an internal condition, it may not be the right thing to use. But if we have incessant diarrhea, we have indigestion, pulse is floating large and long, there's fever with exterior heat symptoms, we can all use the sweating method. And we can combine it with vomiting method or the purgation method. Now, tetanus, seizure, manic alcohol poisoning, uh, B syndromes can all use emesis first, vomit first, 
and then followed by a sweating method all combined simultaneously. Um, and let's go and take a look at the formula that's used in this detoxification doctrine. Uh, since, uh, you know, uh, he favored, um, you know, the pungent warming herbal formula by Zhang Zhongjin, such as Ma Huang Tang and Gui Zi Tang, he, he, he know that this is something where everybody favor these days in his time. So he decided to go the opposite. He believed there's a lot of heat, so he wanted to do more pungent cooling herb. So he uh, described and he recommends uh, using Huang Feng Tong Sen San as well as Xuan Jie San. Xuan Jie San. Well, Huang Feng Tong Sen San is a big, big ingredient list. Uh, you got Huang Feng Chuan Xiong, you have Dang Gui, Bai Sao, Da Huang, Mang Xiao, you have Lian Qiao, Bo He, you have Ma Huang, Si Gao, Jie Gen, Wang Qin, Bai Zhu, Ji Zi, Jin Jie, Hua Si, Gan Cao, and Sen Jiang. So you can see that all these herbs working together to disperse wind, relieve biao, cleanse he, and purge the interior. So it can be used for things in the exterior and as well as interior. In the modern research, Fang Feng Tong Sen has been used in many different conditions with a certain amount of success. Migraine headaches, hyperlipidemia, obesity, skin conditions, acute conjunctivitis, acute allergic reactions, alopecia, acne, and sinusitis. Um, all these are all have been researched to be effective and can be used um, with Fang Feng Tong Sen San. Let's go to Xuan Jie San. Xuan Jie San is a combination of two formulas. Uh, combined with Tian Sui San plus Huang Feng Tong Si San. As we know, Huang Feng Tong Si is very good in really purging and as well as cleansing and sweating the heat out. Now, Xuan Jie San is a formula that is what we call Tian Sui. It's also, I'm sorry, Tian Sui San is called basically Liu Yi San. It's basically a combination of Yi Yuan San or Tai Bai San. It's a combination of Hua Si Talc and uh, baked licorice. It's about six to one ratio. And we know that's used for summer heat with fever, restlessness, thirst, sluggish urination, with pain and San Chiao Dian heat. So combining the Huang Feng Tong Sen and Tian Sui San, you're dealing with all the different heat conditions as well as damp heat conditions at the same time. Uh, and Xuan Jie Sang has been used for measles, uh, which is a big deal during that period of time. Uh, successfully using for treatment of measles, as you know, measles uh, can actually kill. Uh, it's a very, uh, can be a very deadly disease. Um, so, and therefore, Xuan Jie Sang combination is used for both interior and exterior excess conditions. Um, going further into Tian Sui San, a lot of research has been done, have found that this formula can be used successfully in a condition of diarrhea of infants, whipping cough, summer heat, heat stroke, even cholera, UTI, uh, urinary tract infection as well as urinary stones. Um, so it, uh, it, it does have quite a bit of valuable clinical use. Now, if we go on and move on and talk about diaphoretic method further, and uh, in his understanding, he basically said that the southern area has more heat, so punch and cool is more suitable. Northern area has more cold. Therefore, pungent warming is more suitable. Summer month has more summer heat. So therefore, pungent cool is more suitable. Winter months and has more cold. Pungent warmth is more suitable. So you can see, he's not just all using cool and cold herbs. He's also analogous and respectful to the warming herb that could be useful. Now, if you are younger age, younger generation, you have a stronger constitution, therefore 
you are more suitable with more pungent and cooling herbs. Older people, their weaker constitution is more suitable if we can use more pungent and warming herbs. Now, if this person have irritated emotions and need per- pungent and cooling, um, that is very good for the for the very irritated emotion. But if there's someone who has very relaxed or even depressive kind of affect emotions, then we need more pungent and warming. And that's what he talked about. Uh, then he talked about pulse. If the pulse is floating and large, then we need more pungent and cooling. If the pulse is slow, then we need more pungent and warming. Uh, so, you know, this is a very good differentiation. And uh, I have, uh, for people who is looking at the slide, I included the table for you to look. That table is basically what we just talked about. Uh, continue onward, Hanhua, when we do diaphoretic method, we must always differentiate in yang biao li han de xu si. Uh, once someone is sweated and healed, no need to continue the herbs. It's only remember it's quick, strong treatments. Um, so let's move on to the next methodology, the vomiting method, the emetic method, or tu hua. You know, people are frequently afraid and unhappy with vomiting. They rather allow things to go down instead of coming out the other end. So by emetic method, when done properly, though, the effectors tend to be immediate. You know, the patient tends to get better immediately. Obviously, it's contraindicated in several things, such as pregnancy, such as irritability, moodiness, bleeding, somebody who's old and weak, somebody who's manic and dangerous, and someone who has bulimic conditions. This may not work or may not be suitable for these kind of situations. And you always start with a small dose of formula and increase it gradually until when the vomiting occurs. And he has provided us with uh, basically Gua Di San. For example, when he treat Shanghan headache, when somebody has very severe headache due to wind and cold, he would use Gua Di 75 pieces, uh, Si Xiao Dou 75 pieces as well, and Ren Sen uh, 5 Qian and Gan Cao 5 Qian into the mix, grind into powder. You would take one Qian at a time until vomiting. Uh, let's talk about Gua Di. Well, Gua Di is the main herb in this formula. Gua Di is cucumis, mellow. It's a melon. It's a musk melon. Musk melon. It's a species of melon that's been developed into many cultivated varieties. This including the honeydew melon, for example, the quenshell melon, the cassava melon, and different netted cultivators such as cantaloupe, uh, Percy, Persian uh, melon, and uh, and or Christmas melon, for example. And the cultivation of the melon in Asia is very ancient. It's been around for a long time. And it was uh, grown by the Egyptians first, and then the Romans and the Greeks uh, were also familiar with it. And the common melon was at that time commonly known as the musk melon. And the root of the musk melon is purgative in a large uh, dosage. So if you do 7 to 10 gram, it's say to be a certain emetic also as well, that the active and bitter principle has been called the melon uh, emetic method. Um, and uh, so we use, in Chinese medicine, we use the carpopodium, which is the stalk of the melon. Um, it's bitter and cold in nature. It's emetic. It gets rid of jaundice. It uh, treats indigestion, food poisoning, and epileptic seizures. Uh, it also treats acute hepatitis and liver cirrhosis. Uh, and frequently, we don't need to use that much. Two to three fin uh, of, pulse, uh, of powder, that's all you need. Take orally to use as an emetic. Um, and we try not to use in patients who has heart diseases, heart condition, or who has been uh, very, very weakened. So uh, you can see slide, that's a, um, a picture of Guadi. 
Now, we can also use it for uh, miscellaneous headaches. Uh, we can add, combine the chong bai and dou ci together. Chong bai is the white part of the green scallion, and dou ci is the fermented soybean. Combined together, they don't taste very well. So you will vomit if your condition requires it. Um, and once you vomit, you want to warm a little bit and cool a little bit. That's when you can use a combination of chuan xiong and bo he. Chuan xiong and bo he. All right, so that's the sweating method and the emesis method. Now let's go to xia hua, the uh, catharsis method or the purging method. Now, Nei Jing has pointed out that the patency flow of qi and blood is absolutely paramount. When there are pathogens retaining inside, causing stagnancy, we need to do purgation. And to purge at this time when there's stagnancy, it's actually tonifying. You're restoring the body's function. So Xia Hua, besides the obvious purging, it also include, it can be also used for promote labor, promoting lactation, breaking up tumors. Purging fluid, breaking up channel, breaking up qi. So this method is essential for the treatment of tumor, for example, and cancer. This method is especially suited when there is stagnancy, a lot of stagnancy in the elementary tract, in our spleen and the stomach region. So he continues, speaks in the phrase for us. Spleen governs transformation and stomach governs dissolving and grinding down food source. The characteristics of these actions is most importantly free-flowing. We need free-flowing. Free flowing. If there's any stagnancy in this process, in this process, only symptoms and condition will begin to form. The only way to resolve this is to attack is to bring stagnancy downward to dissolve this blockage. That's how we can truly restore the body's function. And if we have stagnancy of earth in our stomach, we must use Da Chen Qi Tang. Da Huang is bitter and cold. It opens up the nine orifices, small and large intestines, and get rid of stagnant heat of the five zang and six fu. Mang Xiao is another herb, salty and cold. It breaks up phlegm and disperses heat. It moistens intestines and stomach. Zi Si, for example, is bitter and cold. It's an adjunctive and guiding herb in this formula. It disperses stagnant qi, dissolve food accumulation, and it also can be used to treat abdominal distension and fullness. Ho Pu, for example, is pungent and warm, harmonizes spleen and stomach, and widens middle, soothes the middle, and opens the qi. So you can see these four major herbs, Da Huang, Mang Xiao, Zi Si, Ho Pu, forms the basis of Da Chen Qi Tang, Da Chen Qi Tang. Now, there are times where you uh, don't want to use the purging method. The purging method frequently is contraindicated when the condition is not the excess type, when there's a deficiency type, when there's diarrhea with a weak pulse, uh, when the bleeding condition is there with weak pulse. That is not suitable for, for a purging method. Now, number four, his distinct feature of contribution of <clears throat> bloodletting therapy. And he says that letting go of blood when it's stagnant is actually nourishing blood. So therefore, he's saying use this when there's blood stagnancy. Because when the blood is stagnant, it becomes old. When it is old, the new blood cannot be formed. This creates a blood stagnation, stagnancy and deficiency condition kind of mixed together, intertangled. Therefore, letting go of all blood is a nourishing method. <coughs> <clears throat> Bloodletting is truly synonymous with Hanhua. The principles of sweating and the therapeutic intent 
are no difference in bloodletting therapy. So a lot of time later on, people consider bloodletting therapy is just another diaphoresis method. For example, a sore throat. When someone has a sore throat, and when the sweating method is not the most effective, then the bleeding method is better. So a lot of time, you would bleed, for example, Sao Sang point, okay, uh, lung point, lung channel point, or these extremity points of the fingers uh, for throat pain, for example. And for acute blindness, sudden blurry vision, uh, you would do um, zuan zu, uh, you would do to ding, and you would do bi zong type of point uh, to bleed. And seizure, if you have spasm and loss of consciousness, you can also bleed by way. So you can see this is not a true blood letting therapy like the Europe, the Europeans. Your whole goal is not to bleed so much out but it's to stimulate point and allow some blood to move, allow the stagnancy to get out of the body uh, so the body will heal on its own. So to this end, this is a wonderful doctrine. The ending summary is that Dr. Zhang Zhongzhen has brought us four distinct things here. Now he believed that all diseases from pathogen, number one. Number two, attack pathogens to get rid of disease and it give us robust sets of tools in using the three methods of detoxification. Diaphoresis method, um, uh, emesis, uh, emetic method, as well as purgation method. And now the least, number four, is that he talked and used a lot of blood letting therapy for a lot of different conditions. Again, Zhang Chongzhen is the initiator for this doctrine and the central thing is to attack heat toxins with cool and cold herbs. The publication is Lu Men Si Qing. The supporting physician is Chang De. The supporting publication is Sang Han Xin Jing. So thank you very much for participating in this class today. I hope you got excited about this doctrine, that you will further your study uh, with Zhang Zihe's book. Thank you and look forward to see you next time. Bye-bye.